welcome to the final news update for 2018. What a year it's been. No, it has been extraordinary. We've been incredibly busy. Uh, we're going to do a couple more episodes before Christmas and then we're having a little break. Just, just a couple of weeks we're having a little break off. We've been going flat out all year, constantly trying to catch up with ourselves. We're nearly getting there. Got some ex really exciting episodes coming next year. But I just wanted to do a few stories that I think were very relevant to Fully Charged and also, you know, caught my eye and are really important. I want to start with Tesco's. Now, Tesco is a very, very large supermarket chain in the United Kingdom. Uh, 7,000 stores around the country. And they just announced that they are installing almost 2,500 charges in their stores, uh, car parks. So I wonder when it says almost, if that's actually what they're actually installing is 2,499 maybe. Anyway, they're going to be installing some rapid charges. This is a, um, a, a this has been co-founded by Volkswagen and uh, Tesco's. Really good idea. Brilliant place to put charges. There are some supermarkets around. The co-op, for example, already uses uh, puts uh, pod point charges in their car parks, as does little uh, supermarkets. So, so 600 of their stores around the country will have their charges out of the 7,000. A lot of uh, Tesco stores are like Tesco Metro, and they're like a store on a busy inner city street, so they're not appropriate, but all the ones with car parks, definitely. Uh, and obviously, if it's a free charger, I'm going to start shopping at Tesco's like a demon. Now, I would reckon five to eight years ago, I heard about the concept of the $100 per kilowatt hour battery manufacturing cost. Okay, now why is this even remotely important? The whole theory is, and this is basically spreadsheets and maths, but the whole theory is if you can produce a battery for a car at around $100 a kilowatt hour, then you can manufacture an electric car much cheaper than you can manufacture a car with an internal combustion engine. Now, it might sound like very obscure news, $100 per kilowatt hour battery, what does that even mean? Well, this company, Envision, they purchased Nissan's battery making arm earlier this year, and their CEO, uh, Lei Zhang, just stated at a conference in San Francisco that they will be producing batteries for that price by 2020. So a massive battery manufacturer, one of the biggest in the world, is saying they will be able to produce economically viable batteries at $100 a kilowatt hour. But I did a little bit of reading around this. Most people have been predicting that we'd reach $100 per kilowatt hour by 2025. So what this, uh, this chap is suggesting is that it's five years earlier. Um, and he says that by 2025, they'll be producing batteries at $50 a kilowatt hour. I mentioned the Kona just now. It's an amazing car. I've got one now. I lease a Kona. We've driven it far too far already. It's such an easy car to drive. It reminds you of how boring long journeys can be. Because in the, in, when I first got electric cars, long journeys suddenly became quite exciting and challenging because you had to find somewhere to charge and you had to work out your route and you had to plot where you were going to go to charge it. You don't do that with a cone. You just get in it and drive it to where you're going. You get out, you park it, don't even charge it. You do what you're doing. You get back in, you drive it back. And then you get home and you've got 40, 50% of the battery left and you go, well, what's the big deal? It, range anxiety is with a, a, a Kona is a thing of the distant, misty past. That said, you can't get them. You know, there's an enormous waiting list for them. Uh, and that might be, it might be around about to change. In June this year, they, they made a couple of thousand Kona EVs. They exported over half of them and they sold the rest in South Korea. Very sensibly, it's where it's made. But in November, that number climbed to over 6,000 in one month. And uh, if they keep that up, they could produce over 70,000 Konas in a year. Uh, and judging by the response we've had on Fully Charged, they, would, they could sell them all in the UK. So 6,000 cars a month might sound like a lot, but Tesla have already done, I don't know how many weeks they've done this, but they've definitely done a few weeks in the recent past where they've produced over 6,000 Model 3s in a week, not in a month. So that's, that's 24,000 a month. So let's say 20,000 a month, you know, just to be fair, to kind of round the figures down on the, when the bad week, when the door didn't fit, whatever it was. So, you know, they are making an enormous amount of cars. Now, this news definitely caught my eye because we've been hearing a lot about the Porsche Taycan. That's how you say it. I had to watch a video. It's like when you watch a YouTube video to work out how to change a fuse in a plug. I watched a YouTube video to work out how to say Porsche Taycan. 
Uh, <clears throat> the old question of how long does it take to charge will soon become a thing of the past. Uh, just, for, just for reference, current rapid charges that you see on motorways, they're very common, um, motorway services, outside hotels and restaurants, all that sort of thing, they charge at 50 kilowatts. That's their maximum charge. We all know that charge rate tails off as the battery gets fuller, but it can start at around 50 kilowatts. That would add maybe around 85 kilometers of range to my old Nissan Leaf in about 30 minutes. So you'd add 85 kilometers in about 30 minutes using a 50 kilowatt charger. Tesla superchargers are more than double that, they're at 120 kilowatts, and that can add something like 280 kilometers in 30 minutes. But just recently there's been quite a lot of chatter about the soon to be revealed Porsche Taycan, uh, which we've heard is capable of being charged at 350 kilowatts. So supercharger 120, the new Porsche chargers, 350 kilowatts. I mean, that, that news has been out for a while, that's not new. An even more recent report that's just come out uh, stated that an unnamed vehicle, it's a Porsche Taycan with a different body on it, has recently been charging at over 400 kilowatts, which means you add about 100 kilometers of range in three minutes. Uh, these new charging outlets are in Germany and we've already seen and used CCS chargers uh, and they were delivering 175 kilowatts and when we charged, as you will see next year uh, in the um, Netherlands road trip video and the iPACE review, you will see that we were charging an iPACE at over 100 kilowatts and it is much, much faster. It doesn't, I mean, it's not hard to understand. 50 kilowatts is that fast, 100 kilowatts, probably about twice as fast. And the new Volkswagen ID that I've just driven, that has 100 kilowatt charging input as standard on CCS. So all these things are gonna get much, much faster. We're gonna do a lot of stuff next year about how you present that much power at a charger because 350 or 400 kilowatts is an enormous amount of power. It's kind of what quite a large village uses when everyone's got their ovens on. You know, it's a lot of, a lot of electricity. Here's a good story about transport and the environment and not cars. Mersk. Now, you, I'm sure all of you have seen those containers with Mersk written on the side of them. Those containers, they go all over the world on massive container ships that burn quite simply and literally the dirtiest oil that we can possibly produce. Those large container ships currently uh, emit around 3% of all global CO2. So Mersk, the shipping company, with one in five of all global container movements on their ships, have just made a statement that they plan to cut carbon emissions. Normally we're here by, ooh, 5% or 10%, no, to zero by 2050. Now that is throwing down the gauntlet to, uh, to ship manufacturers. Uh, Soren Toft, their chief operating officer, said, we will have to abandon fossil fuels forever. We will have to find a different type of fuel or a different way to power our assets. This is not just another cost-cutting exercise. It's far from that. It's an existential exercise. Mm. Way to go, Soren. But what this will do, obviously, is kickstart really big R&D into technology that can power very, very large container ships. Well, very large ships of all sorts. Because you've got to be able to power these ships over tens of thousands of nautical miles, uh, you know, without stopping. So without having to refuel in the middle of the Pacific, that's quite complicated. So it's a really big task. Uh, but, a, but a company of Maersk's size and influence and who, who are going to make that statement, kind of, we want ships that don't burn oil. Get on it. I think it's a really good thing. Hydrogen fuel cells are very high on the list of a technology that can work. Uh, most modern ships are in fact already powered by electric motors. It's actually an electric motor that turns the screw. But then there's a massive diesel generator that produces the electricity. Because electric motors are much easier to control in terms of turning things at set speeds, which is what you want to do with, uh, with, with screws and ships and stuff. So hydrogen fuel cells are certainly a big possibility. There has been some discussion of nuclear power. At the moment, it is impossible to ensure a nuclear-powered ship that's outside of the military. So military vessels have been nuclear-powered for quite some time, very successfully. But I think we've got quite a hill to climb before we do that. But anyway, that's a really exciting bit of news. Another form of transportation that isn't a car is a nine-seater electric aircraft that's currently being tested in Australia. I love the developments in, in electric aircraft. I think this is a really exciting area that I predict 
as I mentioned on a previous news show, you know, EasyJet are already uh, well on the way to testing a, a small passenger plane. This plane is called the Alice and it's it just launched in Australia. It's built in France by an Israeli company called Eviation. Alice can fly 1,000 kilometers or 620 miles on one charge. It has a 900 kilowatt hour battery pack which makes up 60% of the plane's maximum takeoff weight and it can fly at 440 kilometers an hour. It's not like jet fast, but this is for short hop flights. This is only a nine seater, but they've already got designs in, 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 uh, ongoing and development ongoing for a hundred seater light aircraft. Maintenance and fuel costs. Now this is why airlines are interested in this technology. They are a mere 30% of an equivalent sized conventionally fueled plane. And they can take off and land 24 hours a day in small urban airports. So for hops between cities around Europe, around Australia, around the United States, these make an enormous amount of sense. A 30% of the current running cost of a plane is a big reduction. I'm going to do some quick maths. It's a reduction of 70%. Massively less maintenance needed. So that's an important thing. And massively less expense on fuel. Now these planes are already being built in France, as I said they're being tested in Australia and they're currently being tested by the Federal Aviation Authority in the United States of America. So that's all, that's all the news I've got now, it's only a short one, uh, this is just before Christmas. I just want to remind you about the fully charged Almanac, I don't want to plug anything too hard but this is a really exciting project, we've started reading all the stuff that's come in from people we've asked to write about it around the world, it's amazing amazing information there. I didn't know a lot of it. So it's, we've asked specialists, people who work in battery technology, who work in vehicle development, who work in grid development, who work in solar, massive solar, who work in big wind uh, development, and how all this stuff connects. Uh, and we're trying to put together a, a, an almanac that will, well we are putting it together. It's 62% funded. We obviously need to get to 100% to actually be able to do the book, so we're quite reliant on people doing that. Uh, and it will come out in October or November next year, so it's a brilliant Christmas present. But it's not looking at what's happening now or last week, it's what's going to be happening in 2020, 2021. It's the Fully Charged Almanac 2020. That's the whole point. It's looking at the year or two ahead. So that's it. Uh, just before I go, I want to quickly thank some brilliant Patreons who support Fully Charged at $10 a month or more. Just incredibly, incredibly generous. They are Gavin Urquhart, David Stevens, Nick Pont, Tim Oliver, Vincennes Buell, Loz Keeley, Alex Hermanson, Bradley Steck, Ian Marsh and Bart Grip. Thank you so much for your support. It is absolutely essential to keep this show going. Please do uh, subscribe to Fully Charged ring that little dingy ding bell, uh, have a look at the Patreon link that's beneath this, uh, th this video and uh, please do have a very happy Christmas, have a really, really lovely new year. Here's to a, a, a slightly, well, let's say more stable and productive 2019 for whatever reason that might be. Uh, a peaceful night 2019, let's hope that there's less human tragedy and more human joy in 2019. And as always, if you have been, thank you for watching.